My god, the Italians aren't useless anymore? This changes everything! Hey there, my name is Promise and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4! Today we are celebrating the release of a new DLC by Blood Alone, and I am collaborating with Paradox Interactive to play through the new Italian Focus Tree. This has been expanded, um, like, a lot, and actually might be one of the more fun nations to play in the game now, so I'm looking forward to jumping into this. Normally, I would love to play with an alternate history route, and there are some pretty fun meme options out there, but today we're gonna go down a somewhat more historical route and keep Mussolini in charge of our nation, because he can get some pretty dang powerful bonuses in the new DLC. So without any further ado, let's jump in and see what this nation is capable of now. Italy now starts off in a pretty interesting position as far as its national spirits. We do have a few that give pretty decent bonuses at the very beginning of the game. We're actually pretty good at making cheap designs for templates as well as building out some civilian factories. Unfortunately, we have a pretty terrible military industry with a bunch of different penalties for our armed naval and air forces. So we're going to have to find a way to balance some of that out. Mussolini himself only starts off with a couple of modest bonuses to political power gain and making laws cheaper, which is actually really helpful in the early game, but it's as you continue with the National Focus Tree that you can really make him shine. Now, the National Focus Tree itself, you can see here, is kind of huge! As you might expect, on the left-hand side, you'll have a lot of industrial focuses, plus some colonial African focuses, which could be kind of interesting for our empire. Plus, we have the army, the air, and the navy. Politically, down the left side tree here, you could go for either a communist or democratic route, if you so chose, but most of the focus tree is focused with the assumption that you are going to remain fascist. The question is, what flavor of fascism is Italy in the mood for today? You know, it's like Italian ice. It's just like, I get to try out all the different flavors. It's so exciting. Ultimately, it's a question of how you're going to balance power in the country. The classic historical option is to focus all of your power on a cult of personality in Mussolini himself, and there's a pretty good, robust focus tree that gives you a lot of really nice bonuses to pull that off. If, however, you wanted to try and pull power away from Mussolini over to a Council of Fascism, which, yes, by the way, did historically exist, you can depose him and then choose to either focus on a new cult of personality with different leaders available, or go down a monarchy route, which looks like a really fun option, but we'll be saving that for another series. And then finally, over here on the right, we have focuses based around foreign affairs and being able to build up some alliances or war goals against a bunch of different nations. I plan on making very good use of this. For now, there's not a whole lot I can do down the political focus tree, though. We have to worry about Ethiopia first, and I will come back to some of that. So, let's go ahead and start by working on some Ethiopian war logistics. We have a war at the very beginning of the game with Ethiopia, and we need to win this aggressively. Interestingly enough, your progress in Ethiopia is going to be very important for determining which political route you're going to be able to take. If you struggle terribly, that opens the path for fascism to fall. If you win decisively, well, then Mussolini comes out looking pretty good now, doesn't he? For now, we're going to start by gathering up some of our basic starting moves. We, of course, want to get our research and our production up and running as fast as possible. I also want to try to upgrade my guns so we can win some of these fights. And since we're extremely bad at building military factories, for now let's focus exclusively on the civilian economy. Since we do start off in a war, there's going to be plenty of action in Ethiopia at the beginning of the game, so let's go ahead and plan on moving some of my units in over here. Now, as I said, we need to be making solid progress in Ethiopia very early on in order to meet some of our national focuses. So I'm going to be focusing on reinforcing some of these areas and flanking our enemies as much as I can at the beginning of the game. I'm also going to make use of plenty of air support and send every plane I've got down here to make sure that we get plenty of green air. Oh, look! One of the new little badge things just popped up. This is actually new in the expansion if you want to show off how good you are at the game. As is always the case, air power is always going to be a very, very helpful thing, but don't count the Ethiopians out. These guys can definitely cause some issues. Another little bit of a medal. What do you know? End the Christmas offensive. Our troops have stalled in the war against Abyssinia. Mussolini has given us a mission himself because he is a very ambitious person. He wants us to win the war by any means necessary as quickly as possible, and 
this is going to escalate the war. Now, this war escalation is actually a very important mechanic you can find under decisions over here. The more the war escalates, the more things can happen that could be very negative for Italy. For example, our public starts to have a lot of war exhaustion, or perhaps the rest of the world starts to condemn us and provide extra supplies to Ethiopia. Ideally, we want to end this as quickly as possible before the escalation gets too high. Conversely, if you are playing as Ethiopia with the new focus tree, your entire goal is to last long enough that the war escalation gets up high enough you can start requesting lots of help, and then you can actually turn things around. The longer the war goes on, the worse this gets for me though, so we want to move fast. My goal right now is simply to grab a few key victory points. We need to grab some victory points in the north of Ethiopia and in the south. Any of these down over here will do. If we can grab both, we can prevent some pretty nasty things from happening for us. By which I mean we will fulfill missions from Mussolini himself. And you can see if we do not do this, we lose some political power, some war support, and the war escalates. So it's very important to meet these, but he's only given us 107 days to pull off both. So we're gonna need some very careful micro here. See, case in point, we were able to grab a victory point in southern Ethiopia, and as a result, we fulfill the first of the missions. So I get some extra stability, war support, army experience, and command power. That's great. We also get a mission to deal with this new tag we've never seen before here, the Sultanate of Aousa. Um, we could give them an ultimatum and demand they totally subjugate. I'd like to do this, because if they do submit, then we'll have a quick little back door to rush into some of the victory points in northern Ethiopia, where they're currently holed up the most. And if they do not submit, well, same thing happens, we just have to actually fight over it. See? Muhammad Yayo folds. We annex the territory outright. Go, 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 go! And success in northern Ethiopia. Excellent. Okay. Because we were able to successfully fulfill both of these missions on time, the solid progress mission is auto-completed. Now, if our goal was to depose Mussolini, well, struggling in Ethiopia actually will provide us a faster route to undermine the deuce and actually get him out of power. But since we went for solid progress, we're kind of committing that this is going to be the most expedient route. And we managed to sneak through the capital of Ethiopia and that just takes a little bit of micro, but overall was not terribly hard for us, so we managed to pull that off. Hey, look! It's a totally new peace system! There's a lot of really fun things you can do with the new demand system, and I'm looking forward to trying this out with a much larger scale war. Obviously, in my case, I plan on annexing all the states, but we would have options to liberate some states if we want, or puppet, or change their government, or, and this is one of my favorite options, TAKE A NAVY! That's right, no longer do I need to puppet a nation with the intention of annexing them at a later date just so I can keep all their ships. I'm looking at you, UK. Now it's actually part of the peace system. Not relevant in this case, since Ethiopia didn't have a navy, but you know, I digress. It's pretty cool. I have made my demands for all the territory, and now I will confirm and exit, and thus shall end the war. Italy is victorious. With the war in Ethiopia complete, Mussolini has another ambition. He wants to pacify Ethiopia. So this is gonna be our next big goal. We've got 720 days to pull it off. Basically, compliance for all the Ethiopian states needs to go up to like 60%. That should be doable, as long as we keep our civilian oversight up and running, we have enough equipment and manpower to pacify and prevent any rebellions. Also, all the way over here on the left, since we did pick up Ethiopian war logistics, this now leads to the Ministry of Italian Africa, which is going to unlock a whole new occupation law and should make it a little bit easier to keep it all under control. And we'll have some new decisions on top of that. Triumph! This is gonna unlock a whole new mechanic we'll have to worry about as Italy. If we take a look at our nation over here and click on the balance of power icon, we can see where things currently lie. Remember how I was saying we would have to literally balance our power between the cult personality of Mussolini and the Grand Council of Fascism? This is how you see how it works. And as we pass different decisions or complete different focuses, this balance of power will start swinging one way or the other. And as you meet certain goals, you'll get certain bonuses and also certain penalties. Let's build up the cult of personality around the Duce. This is gonna get me some nice little bonuses for party popularity stability. Also, we get a little bit less damage to garrisons and the balance of power moves toward Mussolini. 
Oh, and the Spanish Civil War just broke out. Perfect. This could be a great opportunity for us to send over some planes and some troops and farm out a little bit of extra experience. And speaking of planes, while we're working on all of that, let's take a look at the brand new air tab for research. Gone are the days of different columns for different types of aircraft, like fighters, casts, naval bombers, strategic bombers, tactical bombers. No, that's all gone. Now instead, we have access to airframes. And with these airframes, we can design our own planes. It's a very similar system that we had for the tank designer or for the ship designers long before, but now we can choose what type of missions we want our planes to be able to go on. Do we want to focus on being a really powerful and agile fighter? Or do I want to design a jack of all trades, something capable of air superiority and close air support, but loses some agility in the process? These are the kinds of decisions you're gonna have to make. Specialized versus general aircraft to save on some production. There are a couple of new stats you should be aware of while you're considering your designs. We do have weight and thrust. The stronger the engines, the more thrust you will have, but the more expensive the plane. The more modules you toss on, the more capabilities for the plane, but the more expensive and the heavier it is going to be. And if you start to design a plane that is so heavy it can't overcome its thrust, well, then it's not going anywhere. That kind of defeats the purpose of a plane now, doesn't it? For example, maybe I want to create a really good fighter. Lots of air attack with a bunch of machine guns attached to this and the most powerful engines I can currently make use of. I think that's what I'm going to go for. It is a little bit more expensive, but could be pretty good for me. I don't think any modules are going to help with this. Plenty of thrust will overcome the weight. Now there's actually a reason to have extra thrust because that will translate into extra speed. And sometimes you might like having a faster plane that might end up being useful to fulfill its missions quickly, but also to outrun the enemy. I'm gonna try designing a couple of specialized aircraft. Just a really good fighter and a really good cast system. That's all I'm going for here. Is that going to be the most effective way to play the game? I have absolutely no idea, but I'm looking forward to finding out. You can, by the way, unlock new types of modules for your planes as well. For example, recon cameras or self-sealing fuel tanks, better guns, better engines, more range with fuel tanks, etc. There's a lot of different ways you can customize your planes. And you know what, while we're still on the topic of planes, I should also note that the way that planes are organized has changed. No longer can you have like 800 plane air wings. It's always gonna be broken up in a nice even 100. And as long as you're able to reinforce with the same type of plane for the same type of missions, it will get right up to that 100 air wing. I think our Italian troops are about ready to walk right into Madrid, which means this war should be coming to an end fairly soon. Now, I am going ahead and working on some Balkan ambitions over here on the far right. Because as much as I do want to continue boosting up Il Duce over here with to serve as a lion, which would get me some pretty nice bonuses, it does mean that our missions from Mussolini will give us less time to complete them, but the rewards will be higher. Sounds great and all, until you realize that I'm already running out of time. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to get these guys up to 60%. Now here's an interesting thing we can do. We could guarantee Austrian independence. And if Germany attempts an Anschluss, we would have the option to intervene in some way, which makes some sense, right? Historically in World War I, at the end of it anyway, uh, Italy kind of didn't get everything they were promised in their peace deal, including some territory in Austria itself. So this might be a way to say, you know what? We're kind of going our own route and we're going to be demanding our own territory back, please. Stuff that you should have given us in World War I and then maybe join up with the allies. Kind of an unholy alliance. Alternatively, of course, you go with Germany, which, you know, we've tried this before. We know how this works. It's pretty good. Oh, and Albania yields to my command. Excellent, we annex Albania outright. Pew, thank you. And the Spanish Civil War has ended in victory for me. Excellent. With that out of the way, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send an ultimatum to Yugoslavia and ask them to become a puppet. Oh, alas, we did fail in our mission to pacify Ethiopia. Man, that is actually really quite tough to pull off. Yugoslavia refuses to submit. All right, well, thank you for the annex war goal. Looks like I'd have to fight against Romania in addition to everything else, but to be honest, I'm completely fine with this. Let's go ahead and declare our war and launch a pretty massive offensive. Can't say I'm really expecting too much resistance here. We've got cavalry, we've got tanks. They do not. That means getting into Belgrade should be relatively easy. 
Everything's more or less going according to plan right now. We've been able to punch through their lines. The Romanians have not really sent very much to defend them. So once I can get Yugoslavia to capitulate, it should be pretty easy to set up a new front line and make a move over here. This is an opportunity to go for a pretty major power grab right now. Oh, see, there we go. Yugoslavia is out of this. Okay, and we have our little buddy Italian Croatia, a collaboration government that I set up over here as well who probably would like some land. But you know, I'm not sure I want to give them any land. Ooh, I do want to take the Navy though, that sounds like fun. So it looks like they only have screening ships, but apparently if you're gonna be taking a Navy, you can split it up between the capital ships and the screening ships, which is interesting. Well, that should take care of all that. Boom, say goodbye Yugoslavia. Now it's time for Romania. Now there is a really cool new feature that was added in with this DLC, propaganda efforts. As you take casualties, your war support is going to go down. In fact, you can see that it's gone down by 2.46% already. And obviously having very low war support is a bad thing. So sending your troops into a meat grinder and losing huge numbers of men is not a very viable strategy. However, you can counteract some of that impact by exhorting heroism or something similar. And this is gonna reduce the amount of war, exhaust, uh, war support we take due to the combat casualties. Oh, now this is also something new, especially here for Italy. So as we lose ground, which I only just lost very slightly, but as we lose some, uh, apparently, this can reduce some of the support that we have for Mussolini. The Grand Council of Fascism gains legitimacy whenever we are falling behind in some way. So I think if you're gonna be fighting against Italy in the future, a very viable way of trying to cause a civil war, which did happen historically, by the way, is basically take enough land from Italy that they become entirely unstable. A new mission comes in from the Deuce. What does he want? Strengthened Air Force. He wants new fighter aircrafts, 300 of them. Hmm, okay. Uh, well, it would probably help if I stopped sending my fighters in to get blown up or anything, but, uh, no, I, I, we can do that. Yeah, sure, you know what? I wanted to do that anyway. That's fine. Great idea, Mussolini. And I believe this is going to be the end of Romania. There they go. Perfect. All right. Just in time for me to go to war against Greece, if that's something that I desire. Now, as far as which alliance I want to join, you know, it would be fun to go down the Italy first route, but I think I'll stick with something historical. Let's create a Pact of Steel with the Germans. A Pact of Steel has been formed. The Germans would like to invite me into the Axis. I accept. You got any big plans, Germany? Anything you'd like to do up north? Maybe I can help. I mean, if you're feeling shy, Germany, I'll, I'll happily kick this party off. I'm not sure why you're not going for Poland yet. It feels like it's probably about time for that, but I mean, okay, sure, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna go ahead and declare war on Greece, take all of it, and this is gonna bring in the UK and France. There we go. I just declared World War II. Italy leads the charge for once. Greece isn't gonna be long for this world. Technically, this is kind of a huge war for a rather modest gain, but you know what? It feels good. It feels like the sort of thing the Italians would wanna do, right? Oh gosh, let's not forget that we have to be fighting over Africa as well. I'm pretty sure I just lost all of Ethiopia because I wasn't paying attention. Ha ha ha! No, it's probably fine, nothing to worry about. We didn't care about Ethiopia anyway. Oh, bah, we're gonna lose some units down here in Africa. It's fine, it's not a big deal. I mean, I can, I can beat the French. Maybe not the British, but I can sure as heck beat the French. Or maybe I can't. I wasn't really expecting the British to immediately land over in Tripoli. That kind of costs me all my supply. You know what? I don't even like Africa. Forget this. We didn't want Africa anyway. Okay, we may have lost all of our holdings in Northern Africa, which is terrible in and of itself, but we are making some successful pushes down here in the South. The French have had to pull back significantly now that the Germans are pushing through Belgium. They seem to have skipped the Netherlands entirely, which I find hilarious, but okay. We're being helpful, dang it. We're doing something. Oh, ho we managed to reinforce our air force in time. I had like 10 days left. That got really close. But we get extra rewards for this now, so that's a lot of extra air experience and stuff for a year. Not bad. And with Paris down, did I just get... Wow, I got almost the entire occupation myself. Unexpected pleasure, that's fantastic. Look, guys, we're helping. Italy's doing great. Unfortunately, we're starting to lose our war support pretty aggressively here. It's just not from the casualties I've taken. The fact that the enemy is bombing me all the time is actually causing some issues. Well, we can try to send our planes up here to prevent some of this. Now, here's a fun little thing that's relatively new in this expansion. Uh, if the enemy is planning on attacking and bombing over a long range and they want to skip over some airfields, you can intercept them in the air zones between their starting point and their destination. So, for example, if we can reasonably suggest 
that all of the English planes are launching from southern England, and I think that's fair, we can intercept them on the English Channel even as they're on their way to northern France. Now, unfortunately, because I lost a whole load of land in Africa, this actually upset the balance of power significantly. We already went down to like 0%. The Council of Fascism was actually making progress. Yeah, if you're be playing as Italy, uh, be prepared to turtle. I'm, I'm really concerned about the British suddenly landing on Rome and losing like almost all of my balance. That would be terrible. Wait, are you telling me that Poland only just now got involved in this war? <laughs> oh, that's, that's amazing. Oh, and the Soviet Union declares war on Poland, too. Man, I, I think I messed up the whole game. Everything's completely confused. No one thought that Italy was going to start World War II by attacking Greece, so Poland lived until 1940, and the Soviets and the Germans never made a proper pact. I've ruined the game, but in the best possible way. Oh, come on. This is still annoying. Well, thank you, Germany, for voluntarily giving up some of the land I occupied to Bulgaria. I don't think I agreed to that. War's going quite well for us so far, I will say. I just feel a little bit bad for Germany, because I kind of robbed them of a huge chunk of uh, industry that they were probably going to need. Kind of, you know, just jumped the gun a little bit. Classic Italian fashion there. My biggest issue by far is that I still have a terrible military industry thanks to this little modifier right here. It's really, really, really messing with my ability to actually produce everything that I'm going to need. I mean, our infantry equipment is just completely suffering at this point. I mean, I'd like to say that I'm the only one with the problem, but I'm looking here at uh, the infantry equipment from Germany, and it looks like they also are suffering a pretty massive deficit themselves. So I'm not the only one who's having issues. Nationalist Spain just declared war on the UK? What? Uh, okay. Welcome to the Axis, my friend! I guess. The Soviet Union demands Bessarabia. Pardon? Are they able even to take this if I'm not Romania? I, I didn't even know I could get this event still. Well, I'm not... No, I'm not giving it up, but please don't declare war on me. Looks like I'm safe from the Soviets, so that's still a thing. Um, however, the Germans somehow have a little control in Finland. I'm not really sure how that happens, but okay. It helps that the Soviets are fighting the Allies, though, because they attacked Finland. Finland joined the Allies. We kind of have them on our side. Sort of. It's kind of weird, actually. Uh, you know who's not safe? Turkey. Turkey's not safe. Let's kill Turkey. Oh, uh, this is a great way to kill Turkey. No defense from the Allies. Not really, anyway, because we kind of took away all the ports they would have access to, so they can't even get any forces down here easily enough. Attack them from the south, a naval invasion. Attack them from the east, and then we're about to launch another invasion from the north easily take these guys out. There, see? Nice and easy. No problem at all. So, really, what's left to challenge us at this point? I mean, as long as we're not going to be going to war against the Soviets, it's not like the Axis can do, uh, has any particular threat. It's just the UK. Which we could go and try to siege down, but honestly, I kind of feel like I've got some Roman Empire vibes going on over me all. Oh, you know, I wasn't expecting the Germans to actually declare war on the Soviets, but they did. Um, I will not be joining your war, at least yet. I didn't even know that Pact was a thing, given that the Soviets had to attack Poland. I guess I got tired of waiting for you. Yeah, I've never seen this all happen before. This is completely new to me. We're gonna do a naval invasion of the UK and try to end this war before the USA gets involved. Because that's when bad things will happen. Oh, my fleet's not even in position, but it doesn't matter because the troops are on the way! And once again, we shall land around Cornwall. Because it's where I always seem to land and it works really, really well. Yep, and here goes absolutely nothing. What? What? What is, what is this right here, by the way? Who, who owns this? Nationalist Spain gets to have Wales or Cornwall? They didn't land there. Why do they get it? Oh, and there goes the UK, which, by the way, means the Allies are officially done. Holy crud, we did a lot there. We were really helpful. So let's see, what do I want here? Well, the answer is I would like to have all of Greece, Turkey, etc. I'd also like to expand my African holdings. That just seems like a good thing for me. And you know, maybe I even want to take over a good chunk of France. I don't know. Boop, those are submitted states, right? And then there's a contested one. Ah, now we get into a bidding war over Algiers. So I could demand it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you click on this and now we can demand this here which it looks like they forfeited, so we win this one. Yeah, so you literally can contest claims with people. Interesting. So for example, I'm gonna submit claims for a whole load of stuff here, and quite a bit got contested this time. It looks like Germany is demanding a huge chunk of France, 
and they want to own all of England proper. So now I have to decide where do I want to spend my points in order to contest them? The answer is all of them, because I have the most power, which means I can do things like that. So I want it, thank you. I also think I want to try to take over a whole bunch of people's ships, because this would be a very good way for me to get a bigger navy. I've got enough points for all this, so I guess we could demand it and see what gets contested. The answer is all of it, but I'm going to fight for all of it anyway. I want it, thank you. But it does get a little bit complicated because I can't just keep demanding the same stuff over and over again. At some point, I don't have enough points to continue demanding everything I have been up to this point. So somewhere down the line, something's gotta give. So for example, I probably can't puppet Norway. That seems like the sort of thing that I can't actually contest. But I would like to continue trying to puppet someone like Australia. I think everything at this point has been claimed. I still see all of these things here. What does this icon mean? Something is being contested here, but I can't afford any of it. What's this? I take this from Canada. Sure, why not? Okay, let us confirm and exit. And that should be the end of it. So did we actually get all of this? I got 154 states. I've been embargoed by Sweden. Dear God, no. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. No, we came out of that as the big winner, big time. Oh boy, I got a lot of ships all right. At least a good chunk of them. I don't think I got the entirety of the British and the French Navy. I think that I got that a little late and the Germans took some of it. But yeah, we just like doubled or tripled the size of our Navy. That's good. Well, I feel pretty good about myself. So you know something I'm gonna do? Hey Germany, this is a, this is a relationship of convenience. Have fun with the Soviets on your own and without France or any of the extra industry. I don't care. And the Germans are like, no, please come back. We need Italy. Something you never thought that Germany would ever say. Why? Because I have a new national focus I just completed. All the way down to the very bottom right is this beautiful little thing called Mare Nostrum. And now I have invited Portugal to join in on my protection. I can do the exact same thing with the South Americans. But Portugal says no. Well, now I get a war goal against you, sucker. Anyway, Portugal, um, I think I asked you to be my friend, and I don't think it was really a request, so you will be my friend now. See? Look how quickly you're adopting to my Italian friendship! You're gonna love it! We've got pasta and stuff. I don't know, what's stereotypically Italian? There. New puppeted state, which means I now control another large chunk of the world's tungsten supply. Frankly, my economy is looking, uh... Pretty darn good, I got all the resources. I can build whatever I want and people have to come crawling and begging to me to get access to the rubber and whatever else. That was very deliberate on Italy's part. Hey, South America, were you paying attention? I'm inviting all you guys to my alliance and uh, I don't advise you say no. Hmm, some people say no, others see the writing on the wall. Okay, I accept this. So this becomes my new faction, Imperium Romanum, to challenge the Axis and Common Turn. And what I do now is I would just subjugate some more people into the fold, and then I would have to fight against the Axis, because if I did that, I might be able to realize certain Roman ambitions. I just gotta control the rest of the Greek states, you know, all the Italian states in Europe and North Africa, because we missed out on a little island in Corsica right over here. Then we gotta fight and take all the Spanish and French states, do that, and we could call ourselves a proper Roman Empire. But I think that's something we are gonna have to save for another series. I've had a lot of fun with the uh, new Italian focus tree. It's massive for sure. And I can see that there's several different ways that you could take this. It's not like Italy becomes an S tier nation, right? The nerfs to our military economy have definitely hampered my ambitions. I've not been able to quite surpass the Germans to the degree that I wanted, but with some careful maneuvering and just frankly early aggression, we have definitely cut them off from a lot of their uh, power. So if we wanted to challenge the Axis, given enough time, we could totally pull that off under the leadership of Il Duce, the Mussolini mastermind. Look at this guy and all of his bonuses. It's ridiculous. And while there are a lot of other really cool changes in the By Blood Alone DLC, I gotta say, one of the things I like the most, I'm really liking the plane designer. I like that I created some specialized planes. I felt like they were very effective. I'm looking forward to seeing where the meta is going to swing over the next couple of weeks. Thank you all very much for watching. And again, thank you to Paradox Interactive for collaborating with me for this video. If you like what you see and you want to learn more, you can find a link in the description down below. My name is Provis. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.